Hello everybody, Edward Lauren here. Today we are going to be talking about the Nocturnal Reader's Box, which is a horror-themed subscription service that is charged monthly on the 15th of every month. Back in May, the company began to have issues with illnesses and shipping. Complaints range from laughing off complaints, calling customers liars, unverifiable tracking numbers, we'll get to more on that later in the video, missing items, broken items, and items not as described, and changes to wording in TOS. Those are the allegations. I have spoken with Vincent Huera. If I pronounce your name wrong, I apologize. I have spoken to him on Instagram, and my interview with him is public knowledge and posted on my Twitter account. All links to all proof of everything said in this video will be posted down in the comments below. As of the shooting of this video, refunds have started rolling out if the customers are requesting them. At this time, I am going to read through every email that has been sent to customers and newsletter subscribers alike since June 8th. I myself am not a customer, but I do subscribe to their newsletters, and I have received these newsletters myself. Links to these newsletters can be found in the description below. This first email was sent on June 8th of 2018. It reads, Update. Okay, so I have the shipping manifest for June updated, and shipping will begin tomorrow. This is important to note for later. The shipping manifest for June updated and shipping will begin tomorrow, Monday, June 9th. I have to wait six days before July can ship, but everything is ready to go for it as well. Thank you all so much for those of you who have had patience with us while going through this difficult time. It honestly means the world. Then, King Box production update. So we got in the cutting dies and they are perfect. The foil printing dies are still being worked and should ship back soon. I have a call with the publisher to see how long the process is after that comes in before I can get my early copy dummy copy for slipcases. Either way, if you have not ordered it yet, do so this week as we are ordering shirts soon and will finalize numbers with the publisher the week after next. So don't delay any further. Once again, there are links to all these emails if you either want to read along or want to check my reading of them after this video or during this video. Next, we are going to the email dated June 18th. Delivery update. Okay, so we've had some delivery issues in the past, but this is unlike any of those. This is going to be important come later when I ask Vincent about previous issues. Last week was basically a wash as everyone except myself was out with the flu. One still hasn't come back and is in the hospital getting rehydrated. We are a company of five people so it's not something that we could have planned for or could afford to help. But, in all caps, the crew is back in the warehouse and I've been told we have only a couple hundred left and tracking will go out tomorrow for those left. I know it sucks to pay for something and have to wait this long, and we apologize for that. Hopefully when you get the box, it will be worth it for you. I will be out most of tomorrow, making sure we get all the tracking and stuff done, so if I don't immediately answer your email, I apologize. The giveaway is not drawn yet, as we've been pretty busy, but it will be announced by the end of the month. And we don't know if you saw or not, but we added clowns to our greatest fears box. So if that's something that troubles you, beware. King box. King box update. Everything is on track to ship early mid-July. It went to the printer and is being reviewed. It should head to the binder at the end of next week and our foil stamping should be done soon as well. I have a dummy book for those wanting a slipcase by next week. Super stoked. Last step is to print the DJs and be dust jackets and bind them and ship. It's going to be tight, but we are working on it. We are moving on to June 24th. Okay. 
This one is titled Delivery Update. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hey, sorry for the lack of responses and updates. Vincent has been away dealing with some serious personal issues concerning his mental health. Everything got pushed back while he is working on coming back the right way. We are very concerned about his well-being and in the meantime are keeping work away from him. He is a veteran and is going through a pretty dark time right now. June is all packed up and ready to ship, but I don't have that kind of authorization. So those leaving comments and messages asking why I just can't do it, that is why. Because the manifest for shipping so many boxes cost a lot. For To those who cannot wait at a minimum of a few more days, doctor's orders, we will issue refunds when Vincent gets back. July is also lined up and starts packing next week as well. We are sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you to all those that sent along well wishes. Vincent appreciates it very much. We love you all. June 30th. Coming home is the title of this one. Hey everyone, Vincent here. I have been sitting here wondering how to word this email for a while, but I know one thing. I have to thank those of you who still encouraging... Sorry. I have to thank those of you who sent encouraging messages and, email, <clears throat> and emails. Some of you shared personal experiences, and I have to say that it was a big reason I am getting through the darkness. There were also a lot of you who sent some pretty insensitive messages, too. I understand that we are a month late, but I thought if any community would understand, it would be you. They are only boxes in the grand scheme of things. All I am saying is, maybe think about what you send, because we are a business, but we are also people. We are people first. Also, hire more help, question mark. How much money do you think we make, LOL? I will be back at home on Wednesday from the VA hospital, which will be hard because of the fireworks, but I will work as fast as possible to get June boxes out, and hopefully a, a long, a long, well, it's supposed to be a long, I believe, along with them, July. I am sorry that this has happened. I am a veteran, and I have some mental illnesses that can't be cured by taking a pill. I got pretty close to the edge, but the kindness that I received from some of you really helped me out so much. So again, so thank you again, in all caps. And I know my family thanks you as well. If I didn't write you back, it's because I didn't have my phone or computer. I will be offline for a couple more days, but then we will get rocking and rolling again. To those of you that have gone through anything similar, I wholeheartedly emphasize it's absolute hell, all caps, getting the dark away from your brain. To anyone who needs to talk, I will be here Wednesday and every day after that. If you want to talk and need my number, just email me and I will send it. I truly know what it feels like when you get in a hopeless situation, and I think I learned a few tricks. On to King Box Production Update. So far, what I know thus far, the foil dies and cutting dies were damaged in transit. I can post the email when I have more time, so no matter the situation, we would have been delayed anyway. They rush ordered more, so hopefully once they get those, I can finally get a dummy copy, and they should be bound. It's a lengthy process, so please continue patience, and we promise you'll love it so much. Now we come to the email of July 24th. This is the day that the BOL, the Bill of Lading for DHL, this is the day before that piece of paper was printed. If you see down in the bottom left hand corner of that sheet it says July 25th 2018. I called DHL and I asked them about the BOL and there was nothing they could tell me beyond that it is a receipt for an order of pickup. This is the email dated July 24th. June slash July. Okay, so June is gone. Not sure what you want from me to prove it to you but it's gone. It's pretty difficult getting back to where I need to be mentally when I'm just being berated and being called a liar. I know most don't care because we are a business and you want what you paid for, but it helps absolutely nothing. I am trying my damnedest to get those boxes out to you as fast as I can and it's really getting annoying to see, this is in quotation marks, I have been patient enough, now it's not scanning, you never shipped it, Close quotes. That insane. I don't understand how getting a tracking number could have the opposite effect. We'll talk about that in just a second. 
you get a tracking number and it won't update and now people are even more rude than before. We'll come back to the tracking information. Here is the process. The warehouse is only so big. One month will get staged, all the tables set up again, and boxes lined up on the wall and under the tables. We usually line up 10 to 12 items per box. The art and the pins are prepped, put into sleeves and packing. We build the boxes and pass off the boxes so each area can have an item put in. That was before, all caps, we only have three people right now and are working on hiring more, so we are all walking down and putting items in, which is much more time consuming. Boxes are taped and labels are placed. That's important also. They are then put into large Gaylord boxes and are shrink wrapped. This is done currently 19 to 22 times based on if we use the larger box. By the time we are done, all the tables have to be put up and everything get moved out of the way because the pallets take up all the space. We call to have the freight picked up and then it is shipped to the nearest sorting facility. They will unpack it and scan each in and then it goes where it needs to go. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to fact check something that is brought up earlier in here. He says, uh, that insane. I don't understand how getting a tracking number could have the opposite effect. Regarding the tracking number, Packing slips are put onto each and every box. He says this, boxes are taped and labels are placed. This is where the tracking information comes, for, comes from. You do not have to pay for shipping. This is per DHL. I talked to them twice yesterday, once in one phone call, and then I called back again and talked to somebody else to confirm. You do not have to pay for shipping to get a tracking number. All you would have to do is order a, a package of packing slips or go down to your local post office and grab a stack of tracking stickers and those will have tracking information on them also. We have no control at this point what they do or how long they take. Do you want me to to wait until they are scanned in before sending the tracking? Last time I did that people didn't like it. Now I send it when it leaves and it doesn't scan in fast enough and people call us liars. Which one is it? I need to note here that some people have received their boxes. So some were shipped, but there are quite a few people who have tracking information that has not updated at all whatsoever. The Supposedly the label was purchased back in May and it was supposed to ship out on July 18th. The BOL was ordered bill of lading that receipt is from July 25th and as of recording today on August 11th None of that has been scanned in by DHL. People, I am in the process of catching up. I am only one person. You either want me to get the boxes out faster or be on the computer writing emails. I have tried to make a day or two to get back to answering messages and emails, but again, I only have so much time. I've already explained that we are hiring others, but I can't really do that with how much we are doing each day. So July is being staged on the tables, that's where we are with that. Also, for some that are saying that they didn't get tracking numbers, if you ordered in June, then you got a July box, not June. So you won't get a tracking number yet. If you order a June box and didn't get a tracking number, try your spam and email us if you can't find it. Please, so I don't get a bunch of hate mail, don't take this as hostile. It's not. It's written in haste so I can get back to work. Also, I will not be accepting any incessant posts on our page. If you have a question, ask it and I will try to get back to you within 48 hours. If you just want to demean us or call us liars, you will be deleted and blocked. So he's gone on to censor his page. King Box Production Update. I was working on getting an update for tomorrow, but as of now the dies are in. We are just waiting on production. Anyone who has ever gotten a customer book knows that this is how it works. But for those that don't, sorry, a custom book knows that this is how it works. But for those that don't, we are just waiting on production to be done. It's a highly custom book, so it's no easy feat and takes time. It's a pre-order, so those messages asking why it hasn't come yet, that's why. Now we were talking about an email sent out from July 27th, entitled Tracking. 
I am aware that a good chunk of you have not had your tracking numbers update yet, and that is a problem. I am looking into it and working with DHL to see if they can be located and updated. I have no clue why they have not updated, and in the meantime, a bunch are delivered. I apologize for the delay in the update, but we are working to make sure that they get to you soon. I spoke with DHL about this, and DHL said the only way that the tracking would not update at all whatsoever was if they were never scanned in to begin with. July. We are finishing packing the art prints and pins, and we'll be working tomorrow to build the boxes. We were going to get some out today, but we have been working at full steam and didn't make the cut. Really think you're going to love it. Seeing everything put together is pretty creepy. More updates on everything soon. We are finding our rhythm, and though it's taking a little longer than I'd like, I think we can get up pretty soon. Now we are talking about an email from July 31st, entitled Tracking. Okay, so I put in a ticket with DHL on Friday and got a call back yesterday saying that they should all be updating in the next day or so. They didn't say what happened or why, and when I pressed, the guy just said that he, quote, is not sure, can't see anything about it in the system. This is correct, that that is the same thing that DHL told me. So I really have no idea. Again, for those still asking the question if they have stopped, if, if they have actually shipped, yes. We have not had them in the warehouse since the 18th or 19th. More than half have already gotten their boxes, and that's awesome, but for the rest, I am truly sorry. We have had poor service from DHL in the past, but never like this. July. All the prep was completed on Saturday, and we started packing yesterday. Taking a little longer than we wanted, but we should be able to get a bunch out this week. I will try and get to most emails and messages that I can tomorrow when I sit down for a breather. Until then, we are going to be chugging along, trying to get all this horror to your door. King Box. We are well into full production now, and things are going great. I do not currently have a timeline, but since I was away for a while, I and the dies had to be... I was away for a while. I and the dies had to be replaced. I think that we are a couple months behind. Store orders. If none of the above pertains to you, then you may have placed an order in the shop. Details in the last email, we noted we don't have tons of room. This is very much the case when we are getting the monthly boxes out. In between that, we will ship shop orders. We will get to these as soon as we get the rest of our stuff out of the way. Now, on to the dispute part of this email. This is important because this is brought up in the interview that I will be talking about that I did with Vincent at the end of this video. For those of you who have been unwilling to wait for your order and have placed a dispute with your bank, please read the terms of service listed on the site before, all caps, doing so. We are not responsible for any fees that you will have to pay associated with you filling, filing sorry, a fraudulent dispute. This is important because the terms of service wording were changed slightly. Um, I will provide proof of that in the Twitter thread down below in the description. Uh, then he gives the, the address of the Nocturnal Reader's Box Terms of Service. Then specifically the first few paragraphs and the shipping policy. It's also located on your welcome email, shop email, checkout screen, in parentheses, the box you click to agree and check out, cancel email, home screen, and footer, it's not hidden in any way whatsoever. Moving on to an email dated August 3rd. DHL. It's titled DHL. So I have seen the emails and comments, and unfortunately they, DHL, have been giving me random excuses as well. I sent them the freight bill that showed them that we sent it to them, and then today magically in parentheses, they said, quote, we may have routed it to the wrong facility, quote. Now, this is interesting because nothing was ever scanned in. I heard back from them again about 55 minutes ago. That is in fact what happened. I will have a new bill of freight to send in a newsletter on Monday to show what a horrible mistake DHL made. I know this doesn't fix anything just yet or get you your already incredibly late box, but hopefully it helps a little that they were actually located. 
Now we just have to hope they fix the error soon. Again, it is important to note that DHL has no history of these packages, much less that they were received, much less that they were sent to another facility. The people who have tracking information from May, some of those people have not been updated at all. Again, I do not have a complete number of how many people are still waiting on packages. I understand that this is disappointing and we are more than sorry you know. We apologize for the inconvenience. We hope you understand. Thanks for those who have stuck with us. We appreciate it. And for those who haven't, we wholeheartedly understand and appreciate you giving us a chance through this incredibly difficult time. We have hired a few extra people to help and hope to have everything back on track very, very soon. Vincent. July. July is almost finished being packed. We are working with one of the subscribers to try and not use DHL for July. We are going to propose something to you. I've asked a few subscribers and rather send out the tracking when we send the pallets out to the facility. We will wait for a few days until they at least arrive at the facility and hopefully we will use a new shipper for them. I am crossing my fingers. And finally, before moving on to the interview I did with Vincent, this is the last email update that was sent out on August 7th. Update. So as an update to the previous newsletter, this is what I have found out. The BOL shows that the pallets have made it back to the sorting facility. I was told that they will be scanned in tomorrow. Now I don't know if it was because I don't have the customer or account number, I wasn't told, but the BOL cannot be tracked at all. Um, as far as what DHL e-commerce told me was the number at the bottom of the BOL and the there's another number below the blacked out customer and account numbers but neither one of those numbers can be used to track the actual bill of lading or the packages whatsoever only the tracking information can be used to track now I have been told this before but we have a pending claim file that begins on Friday so if they do not have them shipped by then they are being charged for the full cost of the boxes we will then be getting them back and offering refunds where possible I know this doesn't fix anything just yet. I know a bunch have received their boxes a while ago, but for those still waiting for June, I promise that we will do what we can afford to do to make it right. Whether it be a partial refund, discounted future boxes, or some other measure not yet discussed. I understand that there are some who are filing disputes and that is your prerogative. This is important. But just know that our terms of service are clear on this. These are the terms that you digitally sign when checking out. I promise that this is in place not to screw anyone over, but because we have already used your funds to purchase your goods. Meaning that if you dispute that money, if you dispute, that money comes from my family's pocket. Yes, they are extremely late and we were working on this, but we cannot be responsible for fees that you will undoubtedly pay for filing a fraudulent dispute. Again, Thanks for those who have stuck with us, we appreciate it, and for those who haven't, we wholeheartedly understand and appreciate you giving us a chance through, through this incredibly difficult time. We have hired a few extra people to help and hope to have everything back on track very, very soon. On to July. Uh, July is packed. We got the initial rate of our size and weight for our boxes from UPS, and the rate is about $1.84 more than it is currently. I think for most priority, from USPS would suffice instead. But nonetheless, we are working on getting a quote from them on freight shipping as well. This should take no more than a few days to negotiate and a day or so to create a test label to get in the system to ship. August is almost in. We made a minor change to one item and had it remade so it will be available soon. And that is it for the emails. There's a couple things of note that I'm going to bring up uh, along with my interview so if you want down there in the description if you want to read along it is proof of interview I shared screenshots from my interview with Vincent on Instagram and Vincent was aware that I was going to be using the information in a in this video here now I posted on Instagram a call to anybody who had stories or any factual proof of the things that were going on with the nocturnal readers box I also tagged Nocturnal Readers Box and asked them to give me a statement regarding the problems that were popping up, things that had been said, uh, responses to customers, and at first they were understandably 
defensive, I guess is the best word for it. In fact, that's the word that he uses here. Um, after a while, after the thread started getting busy, I received a direct message from Vincent, and what I am about to read is exactly what is said. There is proof of this in uh, the description down below. It says proof of interview, and it's currently posted on Twitter. So, Vincent says, at this point, I did not know this was Vincent. Um, it, I don't get to that point until later on in the interview. The underlying reason for all, this is Vincent speaking, the underlying reason for all this is just what I put in the newsletter. We were sick, then I had a bout of depression and PTSD that put me in the hospital. Who feels attacked? I have never attacked anyone. If you have a screenshot, then it's false. I'm not sure what, what he's asking about, because down in the comments uh, of that video, I say that there were, that he felt attacked. So I'm not exactly sure what, and I'll link to that post down there in the description. I have never attacked anyone. If you have a screenshot, then it's false. I say... Any comments toward threats to charge people's cards for fraudulent claims when they haven't received products? Because this, is, this was people's concerns. They had not received boxes for June or July, and they were concerned, so they were filing disputes. I go on to say, and why Vincent was the only one who could ship. Vincent comes back and says, I'm not making any comments again. I think this whole thing you are doing is kind of gross. I go on to say, you messaged me. Vincent responds, to find out who felt attacked, because you're likely going to put out false information. I respond, video will be up next week. Feel free to respond any way you see fit. I am trying to tell both sides, you being unwilling to cooperate doesn't help that. Vincent returns, okay, whatever, put out false information. That is what people were talking about on the photo. Um, there were several supporters of Vincent that, uh, I hadn't made this video yet, that were coming to Vincent's support thinking I was just going to drag his name through the mud. That is not my intention. Unwilling for what? I said what I had to say in the newsletters. If someone took it the wrong way or chose to feel personally attacked, what am I supposed to do if I don't know who it is? I wasn't going to give any information. Also, I wasn't sure who he was talking about. I wanted to keep the interview on track, so I said, why won't you answer my questions? Vincent comes back and says, the answers are in the newsletter. I say, answer the questions I posed is all I'm asking. Those newsletters don't look good for you. Give me a better explanation. Clear this all up. You have to realize that those newsletters are why people are mad. You've been combative and unprofessional. Vincent comes back and says, It's okay. Be sure what you were saying is correct is all I'm saying. I'm not combative at all. Defensive? Yes. It's okay, though. For real. You do you. I say thanks for talking to me. Vincent comes back and says, Legally, make sure what you're saying is true. That's all I'm saying. And that's not any threat. It's just saying cover your own butt. I say, Won't be an issue. I'll only be using what's public on your own thread and emails you've sent. If you'd like to clarify anything by answering the questions I asked, my DMs will remain open. This isn't a smear campaign, it's a sharing of info. If you would like to add your own info in your own words, that would be great. I'm perfectly fine with reading off a full statement from you, whatever you'd like to say on your behalf. Vincent comes back and says, okay, I do have one thing to add. Go read Bambox TOS and Owl Crates and Loot Crate. I think people are offended that we buy stuff with their money for them, and if it's late, they try and file a dispute. We wouldn't have purchased it otherwise were it not for their orders. So yes, there is a dispute fee. But as you'll see, that's standard, because it costs you us money. Us is in all caps. Nobody is never not going to get what they paid for, so filing a dispute just holds up my money not theirs. My is in all caps. Their money is spent on what they bought, and again, if they didn't place the order, I wouldn't have it. Vincent was the only one who could ship because it's authorizing a $20,000 purchase of postage, and it's under his name. So going back to that email about Vincent being the only one to ship, that is the reason for that. I think that, more th I think that more than adequately answers your questions. I say, yes, thank you. 
I will make sure all that is added. Right now, this is a story in your own words, emails and responses and the answers above. What happened between you and others is your business. How you respond as a company is the community's business. I appreciate your time. After that initial back and forth, I was sent a screenshot from another customer uh, that was concerned about the slipcases for the upcoming uh, Salem's Lot slipcase. She, she said, I don't understand your last email about slipcases for Salem's Lot. Aren't we all supposed to get them? Vincent returned saying, slipcases don't come with the book. I am purchasing them and will put as many as I can afford with the books, but they are way too much for everyone to get one. I asked Vincent, care to comment? If you use subscribers' money to pay for items, why are you having to come out of pocket, and why isn't everyone receiving the same things they all paid the same price for? Sorry, I didn't say for, but uh, why isn't everyone receiving the same things when they all paid the same price? Please clarify. Vincent goes on to explain, the book itself was expensive to produce because we have intricate foil designs, so what they pay covers that. There has always been a chance for people to get upgraded boxes since we started. I pay for the books to be shipped to an author and be signed, usually several hundred, and they are dispersed in the lot. It's the same thing. I said, thank you for clarifying. So that I'm sure I understand the slipcase was a free upgrade and will only ship to random customers. Question mark. So I'm asking him if they're only going to ship to random customers. Trying to get all the facts straight here, I have a boatload of information to process and I don't want to misrepresent your company. Correct. I am paying for slipcases and randomly putting them in boxes. I have a screenshot from an email that was sent by Vincent to a customer that says he was sending them to the long-term customers who have stuck with him all this time. I say, thank you. I will be sure to include that information. He says, this is so stupid. Try and do something nice for people. I go on to say, would you care to share Vincent's service history with me so that I may share it in the video? I'd also like to share how the company started and other positives to balance the story. Links to previous articles will be fine. He says, still commenting on the slipcases, we do this every month and have since we started, given upgrades, I mean. I say, from what I've been told, your reputation before May and Vincent's illness was spotless. So their reputation before everything went wrong was spotless. Um, I want to give that story as well. Anything you once said, I'm willing to share without modification. Your words, not mine. Vincent says, check out our about section on the site, and I won't bore you with my service history. It's not relevant, and there are many people who hate the military, so I won't feed into that. Now, it's important to note that at this point, I realized I was talking to Vincent. This whole time, in fact, earlier in the conversation, he talked about himself in the third person. Vincent was out, shipped, that's out sick, that's why the boxes couldn't be shipped. Uh, and then he goes on to say, yeah, we never had an issue before that. He's talking about May. Now, that's incorrect. Boxes were late before, back in uh, January, I think February, they were late. And then all the big problems started in May when everyone got sick with the flu, and then Vincent was out with his uh, depression and PTSD. Now I'm going to be reading their About page. Jessica and Vincent are the founders of the Nocturnal Readers Box. We are a veteran-owned company that simply loves everything dark. We decided to create this opportunity for our customers for the same reason that many other small businesses are started every year. We wish that something like this existed, because the book boxes that are out there currently are ones that involve only young adult. We decided that everyone should be able to get a book box that has a bit of mature content and items that are not coated in glitter. That's when we began sourcing ideas and the publishers we pitched the idea to many of our friends and family and the response was overwhelmingly positive. We could not believe that no one had thought of doing this yet. We have been working tirelessly to curate the perfect items for our box and made sure that every item that is put into the box is usable. Thank you for your support and we hope to build a great community around the Nocturnal Readers Box. At this point, I asked, have I been speaking to Vincent this entire time? I just need to know who to attribute this to. No problem if someone else has. I only need to be able to cite who said what. Last question before I wrap this up. Do you and your employees box everything yourselves, or is that outsourced? This question is in regards to claims that items have been missing and or not as described. Again, I'd like to share your own words. Thanks for your time.
Vincent comes back and says, We have hired a company to pack, but they work for us in our warehouse. So just this month, somehow, some water bottles got mixed in our order, and the guys didn't know. They were mistakenly sent by the producer, and yeah, this is Vincent. Just so you have a little idea, I read the books that go into the box, create 95% of the design on the items, order and license where necessary, and pack, and do customer service. So people ask why some stuff didn't happen while I was away. It's because we would have to hire several people just to replace what I do, and we can't afford that. I say, okay, all noted and saved. That's all I need for now. I'll link you once the video goes live. Thank you again for choosing to speak with me. People continue to message and email me, but at this point, it's all repeat information. If anything new comes up before I shoot on Sunday, I'll message you. Vincent responds, cool. It was at this point that I went to provide answers to the community, to the people who messaged me asking me to look into the situation. When I gave these answers to those individuals, I was sent back proof to dispute what Vincent had said. As to back up here where he says, yeah, we never had an issue before that in regards to my question that his reputation before May was spotless, I was sent a link to the Better Business Bureau profile for the Nocturnals Readers Box. They are currently rated at a D with two complaints listed in the past, I would say, 13, 14 months. It was June, uh, I think, believe 20, uh, June 26th of 2017, there was a claim issued, but it was fixed to the satisfaction of the customer. And then there was another one from January 17th that is still open to this day. The customer is requesting $22 to return the box. At this point, I message Vincent and say, Are you aware you have a claim open at the Better Business Bureau from January 17th, 2018? Here is the link. The link is also down in the description of this video, so you can read it for yourself. I go on to say, My concern is, you said above, Yeah, we never had an issue before that. The response to the customer is also similar to current email and public responses from your, from your company. Also, they had shipping problems back in January um, when both the January and the February box shipped together. So again, this is not the first time that they've had issues. Vincent comes back and he says, reread it. The customer was mad and wanted a refund and not to send back the stuff because she got a sci-fi item expecting it to all be horror. We were, until March, speculative fiction, horror, sci-fi, fantasy. She claimed she didn't get what she was promised, but refused to send the product back for a refund, and she kept threatening to tell everyone. It does go on to say uh, that uh, Vincent responded. Um, you can read the page for yourself. It says something to the effect of, ha-ha. That's the very first line of the response is, ha-ha. Um, I got that a lot from customers that he just laughed off and I have screenshot proof of that where he has just laughed off complaints but I go on to say I understand that but you said you would never had an issue before I cannot say in good faith that you never had issues before May is what I'm saying because the claim is still open I will have to make note Vincent comes back and says it's not open it's attached she lost her dispute because she refused to return the merchandise Either way, that's minor. Say what you need to say. I said, I will only be saying what you said. Thanks again. And that is the end of the interview. At this time, I would like to make note that refunds begin on August 10th, but not everyone who has requested has received refunds. At this time, I would like to make note of the refusal of the company to take a break to catch up, saying his family won't eat if he takes even a month break and then Halloween is their biggest month. At this point, that's all I have for you. You have until the 15th, I would say probably the 14th of August, if you want to either cancel your subscription or file a dispute before the next charge goes through. At this point in time, that's all the information I have. If you have any questions, if you would like to share your own story, if you would like to dispute anything that's been said in this video, please do so down in the comments below. I will not be policing these comments. I will not be deleting these comments. Also, I am not monetizing this video, so I'm not earning any money 
from this video. I am not even going to share any of my social details. I would ask that if you watch this video and you want to follow me um, because of this video, I would suggest that you do not because this is not my normal type of content. My intentions here were simple. I am trying to give back to a community that was super supportive of me during a difficult time in my life and during a time when I was demonetized for a while, they fought and fought to get my views and my subscribers up so that I would not lose monetization. This video is the least that I can do to make people aware of what is going on at this time. There are people who have sunk hundreds of dollars into this company, and I was asked kindly to check into it, and that's what I have done. I know there are people out there that even after they watch this video, they will consider this a smear campaign or a hit piece. I promise you, that is not my intention. I only want people to get what they paid for, and I hate, hate that Vincent is going through this with his PTSD and his depression. I myself suffer from depression, and I would not want to have all this on my chest. But, at the same time, these customers have sent money to this company, and I believe that they deserve their product. Thank you for watching.